The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners like you. Discipling the Nations is a ministry with a vision designed to strengthen and develop the life and faith of the believer worldwide. Because my objective tonight is to create or to drop a seed in your heart that will create such a hunger for God's word that you'll be walking around like me. You know, Pastor Skip said, my purse is too heavy. Your purse is too heavy. Well, okay, I'll take everything out. It's Bible number one, Bible number two. Why? I love the word of God. And I'm sorry, I love this iPad, but it just, it, it does not take the place of this. It does not take the place of this. There's something about getting in and putting your face in God's words putting your face inside the black and white ink. Hallelujah. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse number one. The King James Version says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number three in the God's word translation says, faith convinces us that God created the world through his word. Faith convinces us that God created the world through his word. And I used to think that, how does it read in the King James? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's how the King James version says it. And I used to think that that meant that as an act of my faith, I can believe that God framed the world. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that by God using his own faith, by using the word of God, he created the world. What that verse of scripture is saying, that God used his faith and the word of God to frame the world. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed. How? By God's words. Amen. So everything begins and ends with the word of God. The sun rises and sets because of the word of God. The earth revolves continually and consistently because of the word of God. God, he spoke it. He said it. He released his word. And when he released his word, everything that God spoke into existence is still there today. Thank you, Lord. The word was present at the very beginning. In fact, when you read that in the Hebrew, I'm told that where it says, uh, where John said in the, in the, uh, in, in the King James, he said, in the beginning was the word. In the Hebrew, it literally says, before the beginning began the word. Before the beginning began the word. Don't you love that? So everything begins and ends with the word, with the word of God. In times like this, when we're sitting talking about the word of God, when we're sitting and we're talking about God and we're talking about his word and we're talking about his greatness, we're talking about his goodness, these are the things and the times that make me grow. This is where I thrive in an environment where life is all around me. Who can't grow when life is all around them? That's why you got to watch your company. got to watch your company. You want to be around somebody that's, that's giving life. You know, that's what it means to be a life-giving church propelled by the word of God. When we get together, we're talking about the goodness of God and the things of God. And don't you know that God hears what we're saying? Amen. We can't get tired of the word of God. You can't grow weary when it comes to the word of God. You know, we get our Bibles and, 
and they get dust. They get dust on them. You got to brush your Bible off. Pick it up and get back in it. Put your face back in the word of God. Get in his face. We talk about getting in the face of God, but literally to get in the face of God is to get in the word of God. When you're looking at his word and you're looking at what he's saying, those are the times that God is transforming you, whether you realize it or not. You're looking in the mirror of the word of God and you're being transformed by what you see. Amen. As a people, we have to ensure that our lives begin and end with the word of God. It's what we govern our lives by. Nothing should excite us or motivate us more than the words that come out of the mouth of our God. Everywhere you look, you should be saying, did God say that? Is that what God said? You know, things will, I'll hear something. You know, maybe somebody will pull something out of a different translation and it'll make my heart jump. And I'm looking, I can't hear anything else they're saying because I'm looking to see if that, is that what God said? Because if I can see it in the word of God, I can, I can appropriate that. I can live by that. I can make that a part of my life. We've got to get excited about the word of God. We've got to get excited about the things of God. Amen. I told God, I want you to blow fresh on me. Let your word revive me and renew me and restore every broken place in my life. Let your word do in me what only your word can do. Let your word revive me. I want to live again. I want to see again. I want to dream dreams and have visions. Glory to God. I want your life in me, but the only way I can have it. My son, attend unto my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. They are life to those that find them and medicine to all. So their life, their life to those that, that's the key. That's why we don't see it, because we, We glance at the word of God. And so because you glance at something, I can walk by something and see there's some, there's a whole lot going on over in that corner. But if I'm walking by fast, I'll never be able to take in all that's in that corner. But he said their life to those that find. Have you ever lost your keys? Who in here has ever lost their keys? Have you ever lost some money? Anybody in here ever lost some money, misplaced some money? You know how you go looking for that money? That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, get in the word of God like there's something in here. You know there's a treasure in here, and you can't find it. So you get in the word of God, and you keep digging, and you keep digging, and you keep digging until the word just starts taking on form and stands up on the pages for you. When you find them, you won't have to tell a soul, I found it. You won't have to tell a soul. Because everything in you will know, I found it. Here it is. Your heart will agree with it. It will take on flesh for you. And it will become just as tangible as this baby right here. So I said to her, I said, it's because we haven't found the word. We're looking at it. We're glazing at it. But we haven't found the word. And I went as far as to give her an illustration. I said, for example, I'm believing God for 2020 vision. Now, my faith has been out there for this for a long time. So, but I cannot look you in the eye and be honest and say that I've ever searched the scriptures for my eyesight. I searched it for a whole lot of other things. Searched it for a sermon. Searched it for a counseling session. But to say that I've searched the scriptures, searched the scriptures like I was looking for lost money, like I was looking for a hidden treasure, I can't, I can't be honest and say that I did that. And I know that there's verses of scripture in there that will tell me that I'm healed. 
But I haven't dug into that one verse of scripture and turned it over every which way but loose, looked at it upside down and right side up. I can't tell you that I've done that for my eyesight. And so I'm still wearing glasses. You got to find them. You got to find the word. Then it becomes medicine. When you find it, when I get in there and I can find it, the word will automatically. See, the powerful thing about the word of God is that it's a seed. But what kind of seed? What kind of seed do you need? The word of God is a seed. What kind of seed do you need? The word of God can morph into anything you need. How do you, how do you, how do you determine what the seed is going to be? You say it before you plant it. And then you find verses of scripture to water it. Amen? Amen. We're talking about the reliability of the word of God. Does that bless you? Is it creating something in your heart? Is it creating something in your heart? See, we call ourselves word of faith people, but really we should call ourselves favorite word people because we have our favorite scriptures that all of us can quote, you know. But we need the totality of God's word. We need the whole counsel of the word of God. All of it. He said, eat the whole roll. Take it all in. Why? Because all of it will transform your life. Thank God. Thank God. So we have to ensure that our lives begin and end with the word of God. It's what governs us. This is, this is when we need to make a decision. We go to the word of God. When we need to learn how to act, we, we go to the word of God. Amen. Amen. No other entity, no other person, no other voice can be permitted to dethrone the voice of God, which is the word of God in our life. God's voice, whether in print or inside your human spirit, must be amplified in these days and brought to the forefront. If we take the time to cultivate a close relationship with God's word, being faithful to it day in and day out, it will absolutely transform us. The word is a person. And when we walk close with him, the word will walk with us. You walk with him, he will walk with you. There's a scripture that says, I'll, when, you, when you go to bed at night, attend unto the word. He said, when you go to bed at night, I'll talk to you. When you walk on the road throughout the day, I'll talk to you. You ever had the word talk to you? The word talk to you. There have been situations in my life that have become so pressing that I needed to hear from God. And in the times where I've attended to the word of God, I can be walking down the street pushing a grocery cart in the grocery store, and those words are talking to me, ministering to me, giving me light and direction that I need for my life. This is the reliability of the word of God. The powerful thing about the word of God is that if you take the time when you think you don't need it to put the word of God in you, when you don't need it, when you do need it, the word of God will platform you. Hear what I just said? When you take the time to put the word of God in your heart, when you think you don't need it, when you do need it, the word of God will platform you. Thank you, Lord. First John 1 and 1, again, says that the word of God already existed, meaning it was here when we got here. It stands alone, and it stands the test of time. It's proven to be reliable. It's proven to be dependable. It's proven to be consistent, even when we are not, and for that we say, thank you, Lord. 
The word of God is dependable and reliable and consistent even when we are not. Where would we be if the word hadn't been here when we arrived? You think about that. The word was here when you got here. Can you imagine needing a word from the Lord but none being available? How dark would life be? Can you imagine? Now, just, you know, for the carnalist person in here, the carnalist person, the heathen in the room, even the heathen in the room is benefiting from the word of God. We don't know what the world is like to be without the word of God. You don't know how dark it can be. You think about the dark areas of your own personal life today. The areas of your personal life are dark because it's absent of the word of God. It's an area that you're keeping away from God. And because God can't get in it, the light can't shine. The word of God is the light. And anywhere there's darkness, there's an absence of the word of God. Confusion is darkness. That means you just lack light. So what we do, we turn on the light. We we flip the switch. We turn on the light. We pick this book up. We pick this book up. We go back to the word of God. We get back in the word of God. We let God speak to us about our circumstances in life. We allow God to minister to us. We allow God to give us direction and wisdom. Amen. Can you imagine having to pull solely from the natural resources around you and not having God's word? I can't imagine. The natural things around us run out, but the reliability of God's word never does. It's here. It's always here. And we can bank our entire life on it because it will always be here. The word of God is a staple for all of humanity. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you've done. The word of God will pull you out of any pit, any day of the week, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It's always here. It's always existing. Thank God. The word of God existing means that there will always be a word for your life. That means you don't have to have a leading pastor, a minister, or a prophet to speak into your life. You don't have to have that. Pick up your Bible. The word of God existed before the prophet ever showed up. Romans 10 and 8 says, what saith it? The word of God is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Practically speaking, we have to grow to the place that we recognize that no circumstance that we ever face is without an answer from God's word. I don't care what it is. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care who it came from. I don't care where it came from. There is no circumstance or anything that will ever hit our life that the word of God can't handle and that the word of God can't deal with. Nothing. Nothing. And we walk by it every single We leave it in the back of the car, in the trunk, in the glove compartment, under the seat of the car, in the basement, on the bookshelf, on grandmama's table. The Bible is everywhere but in your heart. Got to get it in there. The word of God is the answer, and it's always ready. And most importantly, it's always true. And it's always right. Say, the word is always true, true. and it's always right. right. 
Amen. Recognizing that the word already exists means that the answer was here before the problem ever showed up. It means the conditions were favorable for a miracle long before you ever needed one. We can never, ever forget this. The word of God is like faith. It's now. It's here. It was here when we got here. Glory to God. And it has no intentions on leaving. The word of God is in a perpetual cycle. It's waiting to be released from your mouth into the ears of God. Then it comes back from God to you in the form of the answer. Amen. God made provision for you through his word long before you ever recognized the need for provision. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees ahead and makes provision. The word was the provision. The word was with God. The word was God. And this is where every one of us should endeavor to be at a place where we're so intertwined with the word of God that you can't tell the difference between me and God. Because my life is so inundated with God's word. Every action, every response, every encounter with me be the word of God. Amen. Our life is to be so governed by the word that we like Jesus have become the word incarnate, the word made flesh. We can never forget that every time we attend unto the words of God, his life, his character, his nature is platformed through us. I'm going to say that again. We can never forget that every time we attend unto the words of God, and I'm talking about staying in there until they become light, staying in there until they become light, staying in the word of God until something, until you, you ever been sitting in your house and you thought you saw something move? <laughs> That's what will happen with the word of God. You'll be looking in the word of God and you'll, did something move? Yep. The word of God is taking on form. The word of God is taking on form. Why? Because something in your life is about to change. Something in your circumstance is about to change. Thank you, Father. This is a word revolution, glory to God. That needs to be a t-shirt. This is a word revolution. Oh, thank you, Father. I love this. I told God, I said, every, because of the word of God, everything that I've imagined to do, I'm going to do it. Because of the word of God, everything, before I leave the earth, everything that I've imagined to do, I'm going to do it. Because of the word of God, he's going to put the right people in my path. Because of the word of God, he's going to put the right people around me. Because of the word of God, he's going to open doors that no man can close. Because of the word of God, he's going to close doors that man may have set as a trap for me. All because of the word of God. And do you know that it's the word of God that separates the men from the boys? That's what separates the men from the boys, the word of God. That's what it's don't get, don't hate, don't get mad. It's the word of God that's setting my life apart. It's the word of God that's calling, causing me to rise up and reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Don't hate, say don't hate. Mm hmm. The great thing about this is that God is not a respecter of persons. What you see that God has done in someone else's life, he'll do in your life. Nobody has a corner on the word of God, bless the Lord. That's why he wanted to make sure that you had your own copy of the word of God. And then if you didn't get King James Version, he made sure that the New Living Translation folks got involved. 
So if there was a translation that you didn't understand, he said, I'm going to tell them this every which way I can possibly tell them. There is no way you're going to have to have somebody help you misunderstand. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because God wants his word operating, permeating every fiber of your life. Say the word of God, the word of God is, reliable. is reliable. Glory to God. So we got to get in it. We got to get in it. It can't just be something that we keep talking to you about, Brother Corey. We got to get in it. You've got to take the time. You've got to get up when you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. You didn't wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to roll over and grab the pillow tighter. You woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning because God wants to sup with you. He wants to show you something in his word. He wants to speak to your life. He wants to chart your course for the day. Thank you, Lord. So the word of God. The word of God. You know, I was thinking about the fact that, that Jesus said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what he said. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he got a little offended. He said, have I? They said, show us the Father and we'll be happy. He said, are you kidding me? I've been with you all this time and you still are asking to see the Father? He said, if you're looking at me, you've seen the Father. And shouldn't we be able to say that? Are you kidding me? When you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father. The Bible says that we've been made in his image and in his likeness. But do you know that just because you've been made in somebody's image and likeness, that don't mean that you act like them? How many of you got kids that look just like you, but they don't act like you? So you see, it's possible to be in made, you know, that the, the, and we've shared this before, that where they say the spitting image, the spitting image is literally the spirit and image. And so they didn't want to say the spirit. Spirit and image, so they said the spitting image of your daddy. So you can be the spitting image of somebody else and not act like them. We're the spitting image of God the Father. But we don't always act like him. Why? Because we haven't been attending to his words. We haven't been inclining our ears unto his saying. Transformation comes in the context of time with the word of God. Transformation comes in the context of time with the word of God. That's where it comes. That's where it comes. That's where your real transformation, that's where all of the things that are going on in your life, the brokenness is healed. The wounds are healed. The challenges are met. See, we understand this from a, a, a church perspective when you talk about discipleship and all of that. And, you know, we know that life happens in a cell and relationships are formed and discipleship takes place in the midst of a small group. You know, you're rubbing elbows with people. You know, you, you become like the, the group of people that you hang around. Well, why doesn't that apply to God? Do you know that you will become like God if you keep rubbing elbows with him? The problem is, is we're attending to everything else. And the temptation is always going to be there with you to attend to something else. You can have your Bible right there. And if you, you know, you have your iPad or whatever, you can have your Bible right there and uh, CNN will pop up. Well, for those of you that play those video games, one of those video games, somebody just beat you on that game. <laughs> and here you're trying to attend unto his words. You got a decision to make in that moment to either build your spirit on the word of God you have an opportunity to be transformed or to play a video game and most of the time unfortunately we choose the video game we choose to the news to read our emails instead of attending 
Jesus made a decision to obey the word of God. And as a result, it transformed him into the image of his father. He looked like his father. He went on to say, if you see me, you've seen the father. And that's our testimony. When you see me, you see the father. All the life in the father is available to others through my life. All the life that's in the father, because I've taken the time to get in the word of God, because we've taken the time to get in the word of God. All of the life that God is becomes available to every person that comes in contact with you. Did you hear what I just said? When you take the time to put the word of God in you, all that the Father is becomes available to those that need him. So we got to get full. We got to get full, full of the word of God. Full, full, to, filled to overflow. Not catering and paying so much attention to carnal natural things. And there's nothing wrong with carnal natural things. But if you've got to choose between the carnal and the spiritual, go for the spiritual. Go for the spiritual. You know, one of the things that, that uh, Dave Ramsey says in Financial Peace University about finances. He says, live today like nobody else so tomorrow you can live like nobody else. And it's the same thing spiritually. Sacrifice the natural things today so that you can walk in the glory tomorrow. Jesus made a decision. He was the word of God. He got in the word. And as a result of getting in the word, the word got in him and he became the word. And this is where we're going. We're going to dwell in the word of God to such a degree that we will look just like the father and it will enable us to do the works that Jesus did in the earth. Is that your testimony? Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Jesus made a decision to let his life reflect the ways of God. And because of those decisions, the life of God permeated every fiber of his being and flowed freely toward others. Every healing, every miracle that took place did so because Jesus made the decision to live his life based on God's word. And this is where we are going. We are the church, and I don't know whether you've read it in Ephesians. The Bible says here on end we're going to be the glorious church. A church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. I don't know whether you read the book, but we're going somewhere. And what it's going to take, it's going to take an understanding of God's word. It's going to take you separating yourself and getting yourself in the word of God. And one by one, God's going to transform us. We are the body of Christ. And I'm telling you, people can start church people, church people. You just keep watching, honey. You go somewhere and hide in a corner. All of the, the, the naysayers talking about the church. You're going to see that we're going to rise up into this glorious place. And people are going to wonder, where did these people come from? We are a group of people that have been attending to the word of God. We've been inclining our ears unto his sayings. And because we have, God has crowned us with glory and honor. And I'm telling you, we're going to change this world and we're going to turn this place upside down. Amen. I believe this. I didn't, stop, I didn't stop doing what I was doing because, you know, to come out here and this stuff not work. No, I didn't give up my, I was going to say my life is like, you didn't have a life. I didn't have a life, but, you know. I didn't give up my desires to come out here to be doing something that doesn't work. No, no, sir, no, ma'am. No, this works. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. God proves me. I'm going to prove God. 
I'm going to prove God. What is, I'm not going to fleece him. I'm going to prove him. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to live this life, come hell or high water, and I'm going to let the world see that he's going to do just what he said he would do. It doesn't matter that the natural things of this world don't line up. It does not change the reliability of the word of God. It doesn't. There are circumstances and things that we don't know about. I still believe. I still believe. I'm going to continue to put pressure on the word of God in every area of my life. I'm going to continue to look to God to give me the wisdom and the direction. This morning, I was in Proverbs, the third chapter, just living in Proverbs, the third chapter, and how he talked about wisdom. Wisdom is going to, wisdom, just get wisdom. Just get my, if you get my wisdom. He said, Richard, let me look at that. Let me show y'all what he said in Proverbs. Proverbs, the third chapter in the God's word translation. This is what it says. It says, my son, don't forget my teachings and keep my commands in your mind. He said, don't, don't forget. Don't forget what I'm saying to you. Keep my commands in your mind. Why? Why, God? Why should I keep your commands in my mind? He said, because they will bring you long life, good years, and peace. That word peace is shalom, prosperity, soundness of mind, tranquility. He said, keep keep my commandments in your mind. Then he goes on. He said, don't let mercy and truth leave you. Fasten them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and much success. Say success. Who wants to be successful in here? Did you see what he said? Tie mercy and truth around your neck. The truth is the word of God. He's saying, put it around your neck. Then, then you'll find favor and success. He said, then you will find favor and much success, not just success, much success in the sight of God and humanity. So he said, you're going to be successful and favored in God's eyes. You're going to be successful and favored in the eyes of man. Why? Because of the word of God. Where's the truth in the word of God? Where's the mercy in the word of God? Where's the teachings? In the word, where's the commands? It's the word of God. Verse number five, he said, trust the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path smooth. Don't consider yourself wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then your body will be healed and your bones will have nourishment. That's the answer for arthritis. Did you see that? That's the answer for arthritis. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first and the best part of your income. Then your barns will be full and your vats will overflow. So he goes from talking about your health to your money, to your business. Then your barns will be full and your vats will overflow with fresh wine. Do not reject the discipline of the Lord, my son, and do not resent his warnings because the Lord warns the ones he loves, even as a father warns a son with whom he is pleased. Now here we go, verse number 13. All of that other stuff was extra. Verse number 13. Blessed is the one who fought, there that word again, who finds wisdom. You got to find it. It's not just sitting. Wisdom is not just sitting on the top of these pages. It's not just sitting on the surface level. You've got to get deep 
Remember, you've got to search for it like you're looking for lost money. I've torn my closet up looking for $20. Yeah. And he's saying, get in here and search out the treasuries of my word. Why? Because it's going to be life to your physical body. It's going to bring success to your business. You got to look. You got to search. You got to find. He said, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who obtains understanding. The profit gained from wisdom is greater than the profit from silver. Its yield is better than fine gold. Say fine gold. Wisdom is more precious than jewels and all your desires cannot equal it. Long life is in wisdom's right hand and in wisdom's left hand are riches and honor. Wisdom's ways are pleasant and all its paths lead to life, uh, to peace. Wisdom is a tree of life for those who take firm hold of it. Those who cling to it are blessed. Now, we can interchange the word wisdom with the word because the word and the wisdom are the same the word and the wisdom are the same so let's do that blessed is the man who finds the word and the one who obtains understanding while in the word the profit gain from the word is greater than the profit gain from silver its yield is better than fine gold the word is more precious than jewels Glory to God. The word is more precious than jewels. And all your desires cannot equal it. Long life is in the word's right hand. And in the word's left hands are riches and honor. The word's ways are pleasant ways. And all its paths lead to life and peace. The word is a tree of life. The word is a tree of life. For those who take firm hold of the words. Those who cling to it. Are blessed. And you know what it means to be blessed? It means to be endowed with the power to prosper. Glory to God in the highest. I'm talking about the reliability of the Word of God. So as I close, I want to say this to you. Don't let another day go by. You don't attend unto his words and incline your ears unto his sayings. And for some of you, it's just a matter of getting a different translation. Get a different translation. If your Bible bores you, go get one of ours. Amen. Somebody said, your Bible different? No, it's, it's not different. It just may be a different translation. If your Bible is difficult, if it's difficult for you to read it, just go get a different translation. You know, get one that, that's a parallel. You have the King James on one side, the New Living Translation on the other side. Have the King James on one side, the Amplified. Some of them, some of them have the King James, the New Living Translation, the Amplified, and uh, the Revised Standard all in one. Do what you need to do to get in the Word of God. Discipling the Nations is a ministry with a vision designed to strengthen and develop the life and faith of the believer worldwide.